great. Now we move on. We move on um, to um, another talk on leadership. Uh, we have uh, Karina Ochis, and her title is um, Be the Leader Maker. Transform your employees into leaders and lead disruptive change. Karina, can you hear us? Yes, I can. And we can hear you and we can see you. The floor is yours. Honorable jury members, dear colleagues and fellow contestants, good afternoon and thank you for having me. It's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It is the one that is most adaptable to change, says Charles Darwin. Are you and your company ready for that change? We are living in unprecedented times. You leaders are leading your companies in unprecedented times marked by a rapid technological evolution, an energy crisis, the rise of remote work, the great resignation, instability on all fronts, a poly crisis, as the World Economic Forum calls it. And you, the superstar leader, just cannot manage it all. Picture yourself going on a hike with a group of friends and getting lost. Some worried friend asks if you're sure you know where you are going. You, the leader of the group, will usually <laughs> ignore this cry for help. But then the unfamiliarity will grow and you will eventually, reluctantly, admit that the group is, in fact, lost. The business equivalent of that moment is an inflection point, and we're all living it now. Sooner or later, something fundamental in your business world will change. As shown in the diagram, the old strategic picture dissolves and gives way to a new one, allowing the business to ascend or disappear. A strategic inflection point can be indeed deadly when ignored, but it doesn't need to be a disaster. When the way business is being conducted changes, it creates opportunities for players ready to operate in a completely new way. Today, I will talk to you about your new way of doing things. You see, in traditional organizations, one visionary leader was enough. The Steve Jobs of the company, Everybody wanted to be that leader, he who held the reins, he who received all the glory. With the rise of remote teams, autonomous work groups, self-managed teams, and circular leadership, we need more leaders. Leaders at every level and people who have developed leadership skills. You probably have enough managers. What you need now is more leaders. You see, there's a key difference in between managing the business and leading the change. When you manage the business, your aim is evolution with minimal risk. The main instruments of a manager are to plan, measure, and control. In management, you work with short-term specific goals and five-year plans, and you aim to reach group consensus. But leading the change requires a quite different arsenal of tactics. Your aim becomes revolution, which entails increased risk. The main instruments of a leader are to inspire, excite, and mobilize. In leadership, you work with long-term clarity of goals and make fast movements, often actually disregarding those great five-year plans. And your aim, your aim is to forge commitment, often through any means necessary. Businesses need both, both managers and leaders, but now it's time to leading the change. As a professor of leadership, leadership researcher, and change consultant, I can tell you that 80% of change attempts fail because there's no commitment, no know-how about how to create change and no monitorization of the change process. But most company executives can't even recognize when it's time to change. I classify three types of change, anticipatory change, reactive change, and crisis change on an axis of time and your company's competitive strengths. Think of yourselves as, as captain of ships. Your people are the crew and the ship is the organization. Anticipatory change takes place when the captain and crew recognize a storm that is looming in the distance and make the preventive move to change the trajectory. The reactive change happened when you ignored the signs of that storm that was in the distance, but a pirate ship comes your way, so you react to it and change course. The crisis change happens when you're in the eye of the storm, the pirate ship took your loot and you're trying to stay alive. Whenever I consult with a company, I like to ask the captain and crew, so the executive managers of that company, where they think their ship, the company, situates on this diagram. Most executives think that the company is in between anticipatory change and reactive change. However, 
most companies are in between reactive change and crisis change, which means their ship is almost caught by pirates and they had no idea. Or in business terms, their competitors have implemented an improved strategy and they are lagging behind. Now, this confusion about whether it's time to make a change occurs because most managing executives don't know how to recognize the market signs to lead change. You need leaders to recognize the signs for change and to drive that change. The more key team members take on leading roles, the faster you can change direction and realize your shared vision. So in order for your company to survive, you need to become the leader maker. In the next few minutes, I will share with you five ways to turn your employees into leaders. So you become the leader maker and your company becomes ready for change. One, Create a vision and a mission for a better future. Something, something to look up to. There is no change and no leadership without an aspirational future. Think Apple's vision, to make the best products on earth and to leave the world better than when we found it. Think Nike, to do everything possible to expand human potential. Tesla, to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century. Now, what do these three have in common? They give the perspective of grandeur. They appeal to our most innate belonging needs because everybody, everybody wants to be part of something great. Two, eliminate the safety net. There is nothing harder than to create a new order of doing things. That is because people tend to guard the old way with their lives. Now in the 15th century, Hernan Cortes arrived in the new world with 600 men. And upon arrival, made history by burning his ships they send a clear message to his men. There is no turning back. Two years later, he succeeded in his complete conquest of the Aztec Empire. And way before that, Alexander the Great, Emperor of Macedonia, burned his boats upon arrival on the shores of Persia. By burning his boats, Alexander committed his men to victory over the Persians, who at that time greatly outnumbered the Macedonians. In both cases, soldiers were tired of the voyage, outnumbered and scared. But by burning these ships, these great rulers ensured there's no other way to survive than to fight, win, and prosper. Your people are the same, tired from the pandemic, scared of this poly crisis, and overall just exhausted. Ask yourself, which safety net keeps your people comfortable? And cut it. With their backs in the corner, they will be forced to stretch themselves and to activate leadership thinking. Three designate a change team. You choose a handful of people in your organization that will orchestrate the growth. You forge their commitment to the vision and to each other. They keep each other accountable and they support each other. Now, after they committed to the vision, here's the most important thing you do. You lay the facts on the table. The CEO is usually the last guy to know the company real problems. Don't hide the painful truth. Carl Rogers said facts are friendly. Why are facts friendly? Because when you know the facts, painful as they may be, at least you know where you stand. As my old Harvard business professor used to say, put the fish on the table. Why did he say that? Because fish stinks. It's disgusting when uncooked. You feel awful just looking at it. Facts may be unpleasant, but if you don't know where you're starting from, no road can take you from there. Much like with the vision, if you don't know where you're going, no road can take you there. So now you have a change team. You know where you're starting from and you know where you're going with the vision. You identified where the toughest problems are located and committed to fixing them. It's now time to implement number four, use urgent language to trigger action. We learn this triggering language from the great orators of our time, Churchill, Martin Luther King, or Obama. You see, the time to act is always now and the enemy is always just around the next corner. This sort of language gets people to step up and act. Remember, it's always you who controls the narrative in a change process. At times of major change, the role of the company story based on company core values and current needs is pivotal to move from direction to implementation. Give clarity of direction at this stage of the transformation. Describe what we're going after, but also describe what we will not be going after. And five, celebrate or even fake early wins. Design wins for the new leaders as early as possible. Make these achievable, tangible, and visible. Use provocations 
Leadership learning always starts with a new provocation. Your leaders in making will undergo a clash of the old patterns of thinking with new ideas. In this clash, learning happens. Learning can indeed be a very painful experience. Your leaders in making already confronted a shocking experience when you burned those ships. And now, now it would be time for some positive reinforcement. Think about teaching a baby how to walk. Sometimes you hold their hands, sometimes you give them a toy, sometimes you may even let them fall, but you always keep cheering for them. It's the same with your new leaders. You always keep cheering for them because you are now the leader maker and your power multiplies with that of your new leaders. You've now learned the five ingredients of driving disruptive change, but like in any good recipe, you can't forget the secret sauce. Give meaning to your leadership. Viktor Frankl found that humans are motivated by a will to meaning, a desire to find meaning in what they do. Make sure to always tell new leaders how their needs are aligned with greater organizational goals. Real winners in a rapidly changing world will not be the superstar leaders, but the leader makers. Multiply the innovation potential in your company and create more leaders in order to best adapt to the change that is coming. The way you adapt is the way you succeed. Be the leader maker. Thank you. Thank you, Karina, for that excellent, excellent speech. Now we have a member of the jury, we have Hans-Peter Siefen that has a question for you. Here we go. You spoke about the safety nets. Uh, which safety nets um, should be promoted? Which are which of which kind of which type of safety nets are good, and which are the ones to get rid of? Thank you for your question, and I think this is a very important differentiation that we need to make. The kind of safety net that I suggest should be eliminated is the one that comes from routine, from the old way of this is how things have always been. Because thinking about doing things as we've always done them gives, them a gives us a sense of security because it makes us feel like we will survive. That is the sort of safety net that we should eliminate. But of course, we should keep the psychological safety net. Um, our leaders in making should know their door is always open as the leader makers, and they should know they can always reach out to us. I hope this is the kind of differentiation you were looking for. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you to you both, and we 